Hi guys, so I apologize for the uh, subpar webcam quality, but get used to it because that's what this video is going to be full of. So recently I uh, had a chance to interview Arthur Johnson, who was an actor on Nobuhiko Obayashi's The Drifting Classroom. And um, I got into contact with him about a month ago, and we finally got the time earlier today to set up that interview and record it. So, yeah, this is a... Uh, uh, different kind of video for me. I've never really done a interview ever before in any capacity, so all things considered, I think it went very well. Arthur was a lot of fun to talk to, and yeah, we have shared experiences, well, he shared experiences about working on the movie, and uh, yeah, any Obayashi fan, I think this would be a really fun watch for you guys, so yeah, thanks to Arthur for coming on to this video. And here we go. Come pie. Come pie. <laughs> or do you have a drink with you? I don't. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's beautiful out here in San Diego. So weather's nice, whatnot, yada yada. But. Nice. What is going on, man? Finally. Yeah, for sure. I'm glad we finally got things going. <laughs> yeah. Dude, just getting over to COVID. Oh, yeah. How's that going for you? Dude, that was the worst, the worst cold ever. Like the worst ever. I've, I've, I've never felt, I've never had a cold this bad in my lifetime. But last, what? I think it was like, what, a week ago. So, but I'm, I'm over it now. Everything is good. My lady got it, but she got the COVID now. So, just. She could have yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, pass it on, pass the torch. Um, <laughs> was it Omicron? Do you know? Or... No, I think yeah, I, was, I think it was COVID. Yeah, yeah my brother just COVID. got it, but for some reason I didn't. So I guess <laughs> we did the uh, we did the COVID test. I wasn't gonna do the test at first. I was just gonna take it as a flu, you know, whatever it was. But I, I got over it. So you know, I was I was like, whatever it is, I know I get over it. Who cares? But then we got the in home testing and took it. And I was like, oh shit. I, I got COVID. <laughs> <laughs> we, we both we both had it. So, but uh, so where are you? you you're in Canada. Yeah, I'm in Vancouver. Yeah, I know uh, it's cold out there right now, huh? Yeah, well, I live in the warmest part of Canada by choice. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't really snow much here. So. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, and, it, and I'll tell you right now, you're the first person that I've done a Zoom with. I have not done zoom yet <laughs> oh i'm glad to pop your zoom virginity yeah yeah exactly yeah you, <laughs> yeah, yeah you busted my cherry real good. <laughs> I, I haven't done no facetime i haven't done anything this is the first time i've done face usually i do like face-to-face -face interviews or whatever yeah but, uh, I, I never really did this little this it's this, this zoom thingy but i guess it's pretty neat i guess something like that yeah. Uh, what interviews have you done? Just out of curiosity, like. Uh, actually, I've done uh, somebody else. I've, I've done one more interview with um, uh, Drifting Classroom. It was a group of people that called me, and I've done an interview with them. But that was that was a phone call interview. Oh, okay. Nice. Um, Is that uh, online somewhere that we could see? You know what? I have no idea. It was a long time ago, and uh, the thing that I mean, it was an okay interview. But the only thing is, like, that was right on the spot. You yeah. know, so it was like it was no prepared, no prepared, no prepared, pre uh, prepared questions or anything like that. It was just like, hey, Art, uh, this and that, da da da. I'm like, uh, okay, uh, this and that, da da da. What was this and that? And, but it was okay, you know, it was, it, it was cool, it was okay. And then, um, matter of fact, I just did an interview uh, online with the online online magazine, uh, San Diego Voyager, um, out here in San Diego, just to. Um, for up and coming artists and stuff like that out here in San Diego. So I did like a little interview with them and, and um, you know, and back in the day doing interviews and stuff like that, all my shows and, you know, things like that. So it's, nice. It's awesome. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. How is San Diego for the business? Because I don't know much. Most people go to LA and stuff. So yeah. <laughs> the, the thing with San Diego is um, the market is smaller. So, you don't have as much competition out here. Mm -hmm. um, but with me, I'm all about competition. So my screenplays can hang with the best of them. So I don't mind. I like LA better because of pace and uh, 
there is a lot of competition out there. So LA kind of like pushes you to become better, you yeah. know, but, um, being out here in San Diego is pretty cool. It's, it's a little slow for me, but it's all right. But the good thing is everything is online. You know, um, if you want to submit stuff, do stuff, talk to stuff, you can email people and then you can just meet in LA and stuff like that. So I've been out here, what I've been out in San Diego, like 20, about 22 years. Oh, okay. About 22 years already. So, and it's, it's all right. I, I try to do the LA thing a couple of times, you know, live in the car, <laughs> <laughs> being spoiled, being a military spoiled brat. Nah, I, I couldn't do that time. And uh, my sister was living out here. She was in the Navy. She was stationed in the Navy out here. So she was like, all right, just come on out here and live out here. And you could commute back and forth to LA. Yeah, all right. And why don't come out here and got stuck. So, but no regrets, you know, anything like that. So yeah yeah sounds like it's been fun um yeah what so, about you, what, 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 well, first of all what about you out there in canada what do you do out there uh well right now it's mostly just running my uh, youtube channel i have been a freelance writer before and i'm trying <laughs> to like break into that like the industry is much smaller in canada than uh, it is uh, in the u.s so i mean i mean i guess i could try go in the you know california route but i don't know with covid and everything it's pretty yeah. i don't want to get like stuck in another country and not be able to come back and see my family so. my freedom, you mean like what what you mean like screenplays comedy or shorts or sketches or yeah stuff like that um oh, I've, okay. yeah it's i mean i've since covid happened i've kind of like gone to youtube just because it's an easier place to produce things like independently yeah and, yeah, um, yeah so um yeah, and I guess that can we can get into now like how we started talking to each other because I re-uploaded the drifting classroom onto one of my YouTube channels <laughs> and you went into the comments section and uh started talking about it. And um I think I also saw a different re-upload with like Chinese subtitles where like you were talking about it. Or I don't I don't know if you remember that, but what you said um, with Chinese subtitles? Yeah, there was like another copy of the movie on YouTube with Chinese subtitles, and I think I saw you in the comment section there as well. Uh, yeah, I was. I, yeah, I was on a couple of them. I was on a couple of uh, those, a couple of them, uh, them, them, them uh, YouTube versions. But I, yeah, I forgot. That. Yeah, I was on so many. I'm just just commenting on there, and you know, yeah. Being surprised. I, I just, dude, I, I'm still tripping on. This is thirty some years later. It's, it's, there's still a following. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. What the, what the <laughs> hell? I like people getting a hold of me, like, man, man, you, you played Kenny on Drift. Yeah, that was a long ass time ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I also saw you on IMDb. You wrote a review about it too. So, and there's a lot of people who seem like nostalgic. Like, I, you weren't the only person. Like, I got other comments being like, oh, my mom was the person floating in the classroom and stuff like that. So, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like, it really seems like there's this kind of a, nostalgia for this movie from the people who worked on it and that was actually going to be one of my questions too is like do you keep up with anybody in the cast you know um, um not really like a lot of a lot of a lot of my what high school classmates uh, you know uh were on facebook mm -hmm. but you know because a lot of my classmates were extras in the movie and it was only from my high school it was only about four of us that had speaking roles about four or five of us had speaking roles and about 10 or 15 of the kids were just extras. But um, yeah, no, I don't, it, no, I don't, I don't keep up with anybody. It, not too much. I think I'm the only one that be commenting on these, uh, on most of the videos and stuff like that. So we, you know, we st I still got all the pictures and stuff like that from back in the day. And uh, every once in a while, somebody might shoot something and then we'll laugh about it. But it's not like we talk on a daily on a daily basis or even a weekly basis, whatever. But you know, we we're still aware of each other. Nice, but, cool. <laughs> but um, I'll you know, um, Masami, the teacher. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, she's married to Ken Watanabe. Oh, really? Yeah, she's married to Ken Watanabe, dude. Um, I tried to reach out to her a couple times, but um, she didn't respond. Show the Japanese dude that was on a bike that was in my group. Show I reached out to him on Instagram. He said, "What's up?" The one on the uh, tricycle? Or? Yeah. Oh, okay. No, no, no. Not the one on the tricycle. Show, the, the bike. The, you know, you had the little kid on the tricycle, and he had Show. Show was the leader of our group. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. Yeah, he was the one that had the BMX. Okay, and, yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, he was in a lot of Godzilla movies. And um, 
I reached out to him and I was like, hey man, I seen you in a lot of Godzilla movies. Hey, what's up? And <laughs> so he was like, hey, and but uh other than that, I really don't know where the hell anybody is. Even all all the all the uh, kids that was in my group, I have no idea where they're at. We had a good time. We had a oh god, awesome time. But yeah. I mean, it looks like that. It, you can tell by watching the movie. It looks like a lot of fun. Um, yeah, and that's that's really nice because, like, I always hear stories about, you know, kids having these traumatic experiences working on sets and stuff like that. So it's nice to know that with this particular movie, like, it seems like everybody was really, you know, happy and having a good time. So but you, you know, the, the, fun, the fun thing about that is that, you know, like, here in the States, I guess a lot of kids that are, young and they're in the um they're in movies and stuff like that that's what they want to pursue mm -hmm. they want to pursue acting or whatever but in japan when we did this movie we had no desires to become actors we just yeah. <laughs> we were happy and being kids you know we'll, we'll go to school come back to work we'll go to school come back to work and that's it nobody was like hey i want to be an actor when i grow up hey i want to do someone nobody thought about being an actor or anything like that that we did this movie it was just like a, it was just like a one-time event that everybody had a good time and, and uh that's why I think a lot of people that did this movie, the only people that pursued acting was the Japanese characters that was in the movie. Yeah. Sho and uh, the teacher. Uh, and I think the, the um, show's parents that was in the movie um, before the class got swept into the sand dooms or whatever, mm -hmm. his parents in the movie, they're, they're, they're all famous actors. But we never, even, we never seen them at all. But um, uh, yeah, they're the, ones, they're the only ones that pursued the acting career. And, we didn't care. We were just like, hey, we, we got paid. Went back to high school. Our, our goal was to graduate high school. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, didn't, we didn't care about anything else. But, <laughs> but um, on that note, though, what was it like working with uh, Troy Donahue? Because oh, he was on set, too. So, uh, You know, Troy, Troy is like, what, every grandparent's idol, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, my grandma. My grandma was like, oh my goodness, that's Troy Donahue. I just watch his movies all the time in the 60s and 50s, in the 50s and 60s and, all, and 70s. Uh, Troy was cool, man. Troy, um, he wasn't like that stuck up. He had his own camper. He was the only one that had his own camper on set. But, dude, he was down to earth, joking with us all the time. And he signed, you know, he signed all our scripts. <laughs> He's, you know, he signed my grandma's script. He signed my mom's script. He signed everybody's script. He said hi, you know. Uh, when everybody came to set, when people's families came to set, Troy was there. Troy's, you know, he was... Uh, Troy, would, dude, Troy was good. Great nice. actor. You know, even though I never heard anything about Troy until the movie. And then, um, of course, when we find out Troy was on board, that's when my grandma and everybody was like, man, he, he, he's like the, you know, he's like that heartthrob in the 60s. Oh, you know, okay. That's all good. <laughs> but, 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 the, but the thing with Troy, the thing with Troy, Troy, Troy was a smooth talker, though, because Masami, uh, Megumi, uh, the teacher, Oh, Troy, Troy was on Troy was on her every day. <laughs> he would not every day in his trailer. I was like, Troy, you a smooth talker. But uh yeah, Troy, Troy was a little Troy was Troy was a little playboy back then. <laughs> Did he improvise any of the scenes in the movie where he was talking to her? Because it seems like pretty wait, 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 wait. uh oh wait. Oh, whatever he was talking to her in the movie? Yeah, because nah, that's nah, pretty nah, much nah, mirrors nah. what happens. No, nah, that was all scripted. <laughs> Yeah, everything was everything was scripted. He didn't know. He just uh, behind the scenes, he would just talk to her every day. Uh, but you know, come to look at it, you know, come to think of it now, now that I know all about acting, maybe they were just bonding, you know, to make the on screen romance look good, you know. Yeah. So, but they they sure was in a trailer a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, nice. I, I didn't realize that, dude. Maybe they were just. <laughs> you know kind of trying to just bonding maybe they're bonding who knows yeah. anyway it works in the movie it certainly does yeah yeah so. it does <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what you did. yeah matter of fact uh, i've experienced that that's that's what i do that's what i do now <laughs> <laughs> you actually get together and you do things pretend like your boyfriend and girlfriend yeah. and on the screen it, it, it uh, translates on screen being you know nice little good uh good scene good take or whatever you want to call it but yeah for sure yeah um yeah so um about the script you actually said in one of the comments that 40 pages were cut out of it and I was just wondering uh what you could remember out of those 40 pages if anything I'll do first of all first of all those 40 pages man that was my time to shine that was the when we first got when I first got the script uh before those pages were marked out 
you know, I was excited. I was telling everybody, oh, I got a lot of dialogue. I got a lot of dialogue. I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be the lead in the, on our little journey when we go uh, try to find some land or try to find some things. And, um, and uh, so I, you know, so I was just like really excited about that. Then when we went to work, uh, I think the first, the first day we went to work, there was like, um, well, you guys, we're going to mark these pages off. Open your books to pages such and such, such and such. I'm like, really? <laughs> y'all are knocking me off the, y'all are knocking my, my time to shine. You're just taking away my lines. But uh, that's what everybody told us. It was, um, we're supposed to go to Australia and shoot like a sand dune. Uh, it was like four, four or five of us. And we're supposed to be uh, trying to go find life somewhere. And uh, that was supposed to be our little expedition. And I was supposed to be like one of the leads in the expedition. And, and uh, they told us, they, hit, they, they said, hey, you know, the budget. We can't, can't go to Australia. It's too much, y'all. So, um, but you know, I was, I was, I was upset. I was heated, and I think uh, that that was like what forty pages. So we cut out like half my dialogue. But I, I still had a few lines, but you know, it was, it was, it was okay. And and uh, you know, we did do the expedition. That was all in the hangar. That was that's why it looked so, um, you know, that's the green screen and all that stuff. But it would have looked real if we went with Australia. It would have looked much better if we went to Australia. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm never gonna forget that dude. To this day, I always wonder what it would have been like if I got the shine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, are you familiar with the manga that the movie's based off of? No. Okay. Well, it might I be know. if you read it, I was just like wondering, like maybe you'd see the 40 pages in this manga again. If <laughs> no, you know what? I I I I did glance at some things, you know, because um, you know, I'm living in Japan for 10 years, you know, I'm a fan of anime. Mm -hmm. But um, I watched a lot of cartoons, but I didn't read them. I didn't read comics. Yeah. And um, uh, online, I did see a lot of different, different classroom manga stuff, but um, no, I didn't. I didn't read. Uh, I'm not a comic guy, you know. I, yeah. I don't mind playing the roles, but I don't, I'm not a comic guy, so no, I didn't. I didn't really. No, fair enough. I haven't read the comic either, so I was just wondering, mm -hmm. maybe. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I, I just stayed away from that stuff to start, you know i just did the movie and that's about it I didn't <laughs> care. yeah uh, do you know anybody who might have those uh, the original script that you were supposed to shoot well let's see i had one my grandma had one and my mom had one and i think the first 10 years after the movie 15 years after the movie the scripts were intact somehow next 10 years we're moving around and moving things and next thing you know my grandma i tried to i tried to go to my grandma's office and find that script, couldn't find it. My mom got so much stuff. Uh, she got so many boxes from my childhood that's just stacked up everywhere. I tried to find the script then, couldn't find it. I don't know what happened to mine. So now I think somebody, some of the, maybe some of the students that was in the movie, they probably still have their scripts, but I don't have mine. And I wanted mine too, because I wanted to go through that because, you know, being a writer, I can like remake that. You know what I'm saying? Like I can, I can make it like an American version, and um, yeah. because I still got the movie in my head, of course, and and uh, and to this day, I was thinking about doing another drifting classroom, but doing it my style, and uh, but it's still in my head. Just never got to it, but no, I don't have the script. Script is <laughs> script is long gone. It's <sighs> don't have the script. Okay, well, I, I mean. Yeah, I, I personally would not mind seeing a remake of The Drifting Classroom done in America. Yeah, usually. <laughs> um, dude, I just found out like about what, less than 10 years ago, they, they, they did a part two, which I was pissed. What, really? Yeah, dude, they did a part two like in 95 or I think it was like 95 or 96, somewhere around they did a part two. Horrible. It was horrifying. <laughs> it was uh, I think I saw some. I think I saw some. Dude, it was terrible. I forgot the actors that was <laughs> used in it, but um, yeah, yeah, they actually. I think they tried to take a different route, but uh, yeah, it was that was horrible, dude. <laughs> there is a part two out there somewhere. It, it's horrible. I'm pissed off because they were supposed to call us right when we got done with that movie. Right when we got done shooting a different cops, and they were like, "Okay, we do a part two. You guys be the first ones that we come that we call." But I guess the the time uh, elapsed too long, so. Um, so they wanted him not calling us, but you know, they wanted him doing a part two and I saw it. I saw some of it. I don't even think I could finish it, but <laughs> yeah, I was, whew, 
crazy. Maybe it was a blessing that they didn't call you. (laughs) you... Yeah, yeah, because I was like, who, what the hell, who wrote this? Like, because you figure years later, you figure the budget would be a little bit higher. It should look a little more real. CGI should be a little better than what it was in the 80s. And that was just, and that was just pathetic. But, you know, anyways, they got paid. So yeah. <laughs> not gonna, uh, I wouldn't have turned it down. I ain't gonna lie. I wouldn't have turned it down. I would have did it. But acting would have probably did a little better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah. But anyway. I don't know. Maybe one of the reasons that, uh, doesn't work as well as the 80s movies is because Obayashi is such like a great film director and I really want to get into uh, what was it like working with him and uh, did he speak English at all or did he was there a translator on set? And... No, Obayashi when he, when he did speak English it was like fragmented uh, he did his best though uh, it's just if, if, he, if, if, if he raised his voice and got mad sometimes uh, that's when the translator came in but um, Man, he was a great dude, especially, you know, that was my first time ever in a movie. So I never done him. That was my first time in a freaking motion picture. And that was my first time working with a director. I... Oh, your audio cut out again, man. Oh, here we go. He really was patient with us. You know, like uh, he was cool. You know, we, um, he made sure we ate every day. You know what I'm saying? We had McDonald's every freaking day for like four months. And so um, he made sure we ate. Um, uh, and uh, whenever we had to do our scenes, he just stuck with us. He gave us good direction. I mean, he was, oh, oh yes, he was cool. He, he was he was a cool ass director. I, I, I can only say we, we all became friends. We, we were like a family on set. And he wasn't like one of them bougie directors that just like got pissed all the time and didn't talk to us. He always talked to us, made sure we made sure we were straight. Yeah. I'm never gonna forget that dude. That dude was cool. He was Yeah, yeah, for sure. He was an awesome director, man. And I worked with a lot of directors since then and and he's still up there as far as one of the great ones. Maybe because he's my first one I ever worked with, but um he was cool. Uh, I I like Toby Yeah. Rest in peace, Toby. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um yeah, it was actually funny because I, I you told me about the McDonald's sponsorship before we started the the call and I was I watched the drifting classroom uh, yesterday just to re- refresh my memory and I was like wondering oh is there any product placement and at the beginning when they're all running around and like the classroom's falling into the sand and you see like a uh, show's parents there's the like the camera's going crazy and then there's like this one stationary shot with a McDonald's sign <laughs> and it was oh. like <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, you got me. I forgot about that. You got me there. But I know that that one scene where we're on a bus, the one scene where we're all coming out the bus, and um, uh, when we're starting our school, and we had McDonald's all on the bus because we, we we were full as hell for eating McDonald's on the bus. But the, I, I remember the cameras weren't on the bus, so I do remember we had a lot of McDonald's foods. We had a lot of McDonald's food on that bus because we were just finished eating and we done that scene. But um, no, nah, I, I don't do. I guess. That's the only time that the, you're reminding me right now. I forgot all about that McDonald's. But I don't know what it was. It wasn't a product placement. The reason why they gave us our food, I don't think. I think, you know, um, I don't know. I don't know if they had what, what, what type of deal they had for us to get that free food. I have no idea. Especially if they wasn't all throughout the movie, their product placement. But I don't know whatever deal they had. But maybe it was with the comic strip writer. Maybe they had a deal with him or... Um, Somebody, but I don't know, man. But all I know is, dude, we had McDonald's breakfast, lunch, at times dinner every single freaking day. Sounds and, like you were living the uh, super size me. The reality and, of that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dude. It, it's funny. The thing is, we can order as much as we want. So some some days we'll be in, we'll be in line. We'll be like, yeah, just give me four Big Macs for the hell. Of it. Just give me four Big Macs. I'll take three large fries. You know, it's like we can order anything we want every single day, but. Uh, the funny thing is, after that movie, dude, I don't think I, I don't think I ate McDonald's like for another five years after that. I think I, I think it took me like my five years before I ate McDonald's again. I was I was worn out, dude. I was worn out McDonald's. I was done. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was dude. That was man, that was fun time, especially the first time being in the movie, man. I was like, man, they, wow, this, this, is this what happens to actors? They get they, they get they get this kind of treatment. <laughs> but uh, 
yeah, we were treated like royalty then. Nice. Very cool. So yeah, um, you were living in Japan at the time when uh, this was going on? Yeah, yeah, actually. Uh, yeah, because I was in Japan from 80 to 90. Oh, okay. And, um, and uh, yeah, the Drifting Classroom was what, 80? 87, I think, is when it was released. Yeah, 87, 87 was when we released. 86 was when we started filming in 86. So, um, yeah. yeah, so I was, yeah, I was, yeah, I was there. Yeah, and how old were you during that, uh, uh, during the production? I uh, whenever I was in the classroom, I was 15, 16. Yeah, I was 15, 16 when I shot the different classroom. Nice, cool. So well, what was it like, I guess, the process of auditioning for like an English speaking role in Japan and everything like that just seems like kind of a unique experience in and of itself. Man, it was it was crazy because, you know, back in the day, back in the 80s in Japan, it was already easy. Commercials came easy in Japan because yeah. they love American kids. So you had kids, American kids just walking off base downtown Tokyo just to get just to get noticed. And be in a commercial. Like you could be walking downtown Tokyo and somebody just come out, somebody had come out, some agency had come out and be like, Do you want to be in a commercial, a Pepsi commercial? I'm like, yeah, it, it was easy. You didn't have to have no agent, no nothing. You just people were just in commercial left and right down there. And um, so we were, you know, I was familiar with doing these little shows and stuff like that, but it was so funny, man, how I how I came across that role or that part was because uh me and my friend were walking home, <laughs> we were walking home from school and um when I got home, I forgot my book bag. When I, walked, when, I, when I got halfway home, I forgot my book bag. So me and him turned around to go look for my book bag. And as we turn around going to look for my book bag, a couple minutes later, this freaking black limousine pulls up beside of us on base. And they were full of Japanese people. And it was like, you guys want to be in a movie? I'm like, uh, is this a joke? You know, <laughs> what do you mean to be in a movie? I'm like, yeah, I don't mind being in a movie. Well, I mean, what's, what's going on? It's like, well, we're going to be here uh, in two weeks, we're going to be at such such spot, you know, show up there. We'll, we'll go more into detail, yada, yada. And uh, I was like, okay, I'll be there, I guess. You know, I guess this is interesting. It sounds fun. And then uh, they left. So then my partner, I was like, man, we got a chance to be in a movie. Are you going to be in a movie? He's like, uh, I don't know, man. I'm like, what do you mean it's a movie, dude? So, so, so we get home, tell our parents. My mom was like, yeah, you know, if it's a movie, you know, great, great. But my other, my other kid, my other partner, his mom was like, Dude, you go finish high school. I don't care if it's a movie or not. You're not doing that. So I'm, I'm like, he's like, well, Art, I can't, I can't go to the meeting. But I'm like, well, I'm going. <laughs> I'll be there. <laughs> so then, um, a couple weeks later, we all met at the, uh, we all met at this one location, and there was a whole bunch of other kids that, that, that they talked to because they were riding around on base picking out kids, American kids, and um, and I guess that's whenever they explained to us on uh, when they want to start shooting and what's going on and what's the process and what we got to do, and they're taking down our names and everything, and they said, well. You know, um, we'll give you a call. You know, if we want you to do a cold reading, which I didn't know what I didn't know what the freaking cold reading was. I just cold reading. What the hell is that? You know. So uh, they wound up calling me. It's like, okay, well, it's time for your group to come down to Tokyo. So we wound up getting down there to Tokyo, and then we did a cold. We're all in a circle, and dude, we had scripts in front of us. And like I say, I never did a cold reading before in my life. But I'm like, what do we gotta do? It's like, just read. Whenever it comes to you, just read. Just read. Dude, I was so nervous, and I was just like. <laughs> I was fumbling over my lines. I was, I was so nervous reading in front of all these people. And um, and I already already assumed that I probably didn't get it after that. But after that, they was like, okay, so we call you back. There's a good chance you could be in the movie. I'm like, okay, all right, good. So we left, we left, right? And uh, I think about two weeks passed. I'm like, well, they didn't call me back yet, damn. So I'm talking to all my other friends. I'm like, do you know who got called back yet? Dude, who got called back yet? So I'm starting to hear rumors that other kids got called back. So I'm like, man, dang, I didn't get it, right? This is what's so funny. So the other friends, my other friends, they got it. They got their little roles, but they were extra roles. They got their little parts. So one day, the day school starts, I'm getting ready for school. Put my clothes on, I get ready for school. Next thing you know, I get a phone call, right? 15 minutes before I'm about to head out the house, I get a phone call. Uh, all right, you ready to go? We're, we're coming to pick you up. I'm like, uh, what do you, well, hello, excuse me, what? We're going to pick you up. You're, you're going to play Kenny. We're going to meet you for the movie. Huh? I'm about to go to school. No, you're not. Not today. So, so, so my, dude, my mom was like, I was like, mom, I got the role. I got, I got to play Kenny. My mom was like, boy, get on that bus. You are going to, you, you, you got to do that movie. I said, mom, are you sure you don't mind? I'm going to skip school. This is a lot of school we got to miss. 
And my mom was like, this is the once in a lifetime chance, son, go enjoy. We'll do it to school later. So, uh, yep, it was funny. After that day, the bus came and picked us up like 15 minutes later. Rolled, I, it was a bus that came and picked all the kids up that, that was in the movie and uh, took us to the studio. And, and that's where we started. We, that's where we, we got this, we started, got our characters and got our wardrobe and, and uh, all the other stuff. So it was, but yeah, that was, that was, that was, cra- that was crazy, crazy process, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That is yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah I was, was going to ask you what advice you have for like child actors breaking into the industry, and I guess just walk around Tokyo and maybe a black limousine will pick you up. Or... <laughs> I mean, what, what every freaking what Sprite, Pepsi, whatever commercial was, even they just love picking up American kids. It's like it was just simple because, uh, like I told you, man, a lot of kids just go walking down alleys where these H's are. I remember one day I got on, I got on a train. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go downtown Tokyo. Let me just go to Tokyo and walk around. And, you know, let's see if I get picked up. And and, and my friend did, my partner did. Um, he was tall and I guess they wanted to use him. So uh, yeah, they just they just chose us and put us in commercials, dude. We, we got we got a little money and, but it's just funny because nobody desired to be an actor. It was just, hey, it was easy, easy money. You, you, you get behind camera, smile and leave, or, you know, or whatever. <laughs> yeah, so, but uh, yeah, that, that, was, that was cool, dude. Especially never, never being an actor in my, never acting in anything other than uh, childhood videos and stuff like that. So, yeah. <laughs> so um, what acting have you kept up with uh, since then? Like I, I um, know you have like a podcast and a YouTube channel and stuff. So um... Um, yeah, it's funny. So what you figure after that movie, I think I took like a 15 year break because <laughs> 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 I had no desire to be an actor. And uh, whenever I got to Kansas, I guess I'll, I'll, I started doing these little pageants and stuff like that in Kansas. And I was like, you know what? I guess it's time to kind of pursue this. And uh, I applied for American Academy of Dramatic Arts in LA. And um, they met me in Kansas City and, and auditioned for them and they accepted me. So I went to acting school and got my Denzel on. Um, after that, I tried to do the commercial stuff. Um, I did a few game shows, did one national commercial and stuff like that after school, but they were coming too slow. So with the experience that I got from acting school, um, I just started writing, dude. And I was like, you know what? Let me just do my own stuff. Let me, let me, I can do this. Let me write my own, let me write my own work, write my own roles and stuff like that. And um, so that's what I wound up starting doing. So now just, I've been doing short films. Uh, I got like what, four screenplays. I got like over 200 shorts. I got sketches. I got, yeah, I got, man, I got like a, I got an arsenal of work right now. So, um, uh, and the black ones, the black ones, my podcast, that originated from, the screenplay I wrote 10 years ago, The Black Ones, um, about two wacky detectives on the hunt for a satanic jelly bean killer who, uh, who kills his victims with the black ones. So that's one of my screenplays. And I got Marvel. So I got, I got, you know, I got, I've, I've been, I've been busy. Yeah. For, you know, I've been busy for a while. So I'm independent, trying to get everything out there myself. And, and um, so it, it's been a blessing, dude. It's been a journey and a blessing that I'm still, that I still have the passion for doing this, you know. Yeah, so, for sure. Yeah, so um, so I write comedy, not sci-fi. Sci-fi <laughs> with Richard Thompson, I do comedy now, all comedy. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But um, on that note, do you like did the drifting classroom uh, kind of be the influence for you wanting to keep up with this stuff? Do you think you would have if it wasn't for the drifting classroom? Or no, I think you know what I'm a you know I'm a believer of fate. So um, I just know that if it wasn't drifting classroom. I would have probably still done it because, um, like I say, it was a 15 year gap and yeah. uh, where it was no kind of acting. Uh, was it besides a besides the, the the tail end of the 15 years where I started doing like little patches and stuff like that and trying to become a model and stuff like that in Kansas. But I don't know, dude. I, you know, I'm not going to say that the Drifting Classroom helped out because when I look back, man, dude, I did horrible. My acting was horrible in that movie. <laughs> I had no skills whatsoever. But um, but I did miss that limelight because when I was in Japan, dude, we did interviews after interviews, uh, signing autographs. I kind of missed that signing autographs and things like that. Um, but if I'd have got to be in another different classroom, I would, I would, uh, I would have definitely jumped on that. But no, I'm not. I don't know if a different classroom influenced me. I, I'm not. I I don't know. I think it probably did because I still use that movie. Um, down the line i still use that movie down the line but but i think my acting school is what influenced me more um yeah 
yeah, I think my acting school is what influenced me more. Once I once I finished acting school, I was like, oh man, I can, dude, I'm a hell of an actor. <laughs> I can do this. What am I talking about? So, um, but yeah, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. but I think the drinking classroom helped out a lot. I think it helped out a lot because I can say I've been there and done that, you know, yeah. because a lot of people, dude, what, in, 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 in Hollywood, it's like what, one in a million makes a, makes a motion picture. I got to do one at, when I was like 15 years old, I was in one. So, you know, I, I guess I could say I got that under my belt, but. Yeah. Um, yeah, before I talk to you, the thing I remembered the most about Kenny was um, the scene with his like piggy bank. <laughs> and I'm, I really want to know, like, where did that come from? Like, who did that belong to? Um, I'm going to put up a picture on the screen for those of you who don't know who, who haven't seen the movie and don't know what I'm talking about. But yeah, what was the deal with that thing? <laughs> all right, first of all, yeah, right. First of all, you know, Japan doesn't have a racist bone in their body, right? And that country does not have a racist bone in their body, right? So all I know is if I saw this piggy bank, you know, back then I didn't do I didn't think anything of that piggy bank, like nothing. I was just like, okay, so the face is kind of dark. You know, it's like, it looks kind of weird. <laughs> I think my grandma was like, huh? <laughs> and my mom was like, what's up with that piggy bank? I'm like, mom, this, it, it, was, it was a piggy bank that was in the school. And, you know, my mom was like, why why have to be that piggy bank, though? I'm like, <laughs> like I, I don't know. Look, mom, I don't know. <laughs> you know but, uh, so, yeah, dude. <laughs> so anyways. Uh, yeah, I was funny. So I was shaking that piggy bank the whole time. I was kept saying, oh, "This is kind of weird. What, <laughs> what is this piggy bank that I'm holding up?" But uh, you know, it's, yeah, that that was uh, that was my infamous bank. That, that, that was my infamous bank, man. My little piggy bank, man. That's the yeah. A lot of people, uh, a lot of people like to go there with the piggy bank, but you know, it was um, <laughs> it was just a piggy bank. <laughs> Piggy bank with a change in it. <laughs> yeah, I remember that too. <laughs> and dude, dude that, that's that, that, that scene, right? It was me and my partners. Dude, I think we took like 15 takes in that scene because we could not stop laughing because <laughs> they knew what I was going to have to do with that bank. So, that, so, so right before we shut, I think, I think Obiashi was getting mad because uh, we couldn't stop laughing every time I had to do that scene. And uh, every time I get up, I start busting up laughing because they knew I'm about to grab this bank. And, uh, and, and, and dude, I think I think we kind of I think Obiashi was not on our good side. On, on, he, he wasn't on our side that day. He was really pissed off at that day because that goddamn bank man kept making us laugh all day. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, that, that, yeah, I kind of missed that bank man. I missed that. Bank. Yeah, <laughs> shaking it like that, you know. And that was my line, man. That was the biggest line that I had, man. You know, and I, I'm mad because I messed that line up because I whispered it. I should have been louder. <laughs> I should have been louder that line. Now that I look back in the day, now that I look back. If I had that chance to get that again, I would have nailed that role. <laughs> I would have nailed them lines. But that was, that was my first time. That was my first time doing that. So, um, you know, anyway. Yeah. Uh, I miss that damn piggy bank shit. <laughs> it's a funny little prop. <laughs> um, yeah, man. It was, it was, uh, you know, it, it, I, I, and I can't remember if I asked him, like, what's up with this piggy bank, y'all? Why, why, why you use this? You know what? I think I did ask, but I forgot what they said. Um, they gave me, I think they gave me, they gave me a pretty good answer. It was, uh, I was like, oh, okay, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's understandable. Yeah. They gave me a pretty good reason why they used it. I forgot though, but. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Speaking of props, what was it like working with like green screen and puppets for like a 15 year old that seems like pretty daunting and stuff. So, you, you know, um, the, the thing with the green screen back then was it was simple because all our, uh, all the, um, all the studios were filled with sand. I think we were like, we had like five lots. Uh, three lots were filled with sand. And um, the green screen pretty much was just an extended version of the sand. So it's not like, uh, because we used the, they, they made those big, huge ass cockroaches out of foam. So it was like, so we got the, we got the, we got the experience, those big ass hands attacking us. There was, those were real hands. So, um, but the green screen, the only thing, the only green screen issue um, where there was like nothing there was whenever we, um, we went our expedition and Piggy, well not Piggy, but the, the guy that played Robert, um, whenever he put his head down, whenever he put his head down like that and the water came up and made him into a skeleton. 
that was that was the only time where where I was like, we just had to look down and be surprised. <laughs> and that was with the, the water or whatever. Uh, that was fake, whatever. That, that was uh, the first time I ever acting with that. But uh, and then when it, when it was floating, it was on these little platforms. Yeah. And uh, it was green screen all around. It was on a platform. We just had to, you know, that was simple. We just had to, you know, do this. Oh, okay, this is easy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got this. Cool. <laughs> but uh, so green screen was, um, it was pretty easy to work with. It was, um, there wasn't too far advanced with that green screen stuff where the, you know, where nowadays, a lot of you know robots and whatever they can stick in the green screen and all that stuff but no nah, this wasn't nothing like that it was just extended like an extended part of the scene or whatever or the background so yeah yeah it is true that it's used a lot more nowadays but uh also yeah. on that note what was it like because like playing with fire and stuff wouldn't be something that they would really make children do on a set nowadays and like with like mud and stuff like that so oh, or hazardous so stuff Oh my goodness. Okay, first of all, you, you gotta realize back in the day I had a curl, I had a Jerry curl, right? You know, Jerry curl, I had grease in my hair every day. Back okay. in the day you know? And um dude, it dried my hair out every day because every day, every day I went to, every day I went to the scene, every day I went to work, they put dirt in my hair every day. They like they put sand in my hair every day. It's like don't I was like, don't know I got a Jerry curl? Like you can't I, I can't wash my hair every day, it dries out. My curl would disappear, <laughs> it, it would dissipate. Yeah. but um yeah so um <laughs> so hold on. hold on so um yeah so it's, dude so it's like every freaking day it was jail dirt <laughs> sticky crap it was every single day we walked into nothing but just dirt dirt i mean it was just it dirt 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 but uh, my outfit, we're the same outfit. I had, I had like five different outfits. Each each one of them was covered with dirt every day. Like I never had a clean outfit. Like every, they're like, Art, you got a new outfit. I get the outfit. It's already covered in dirt. But <laughs> 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 it's supposed to be a new outfit, new shoes, but they're still dirty. But um, uh, the fire scene. Yeah, uh, the guy that was the guy that got lit up on a uh, on set, dude. He was wrapped up like in. Uh, obviously that was a stunt man. He was wrapped up like in six layers of clothing and all that stuff and and uh i remember we were right next to him dude like there was like all right art you guys just act scared he's gonna come running in here just act scared and, and get out of the way i'm like this dude's really on fire he's running he's <laughs> like right next to us you know but uh they had the fire people on you know all, all on hand and it actually did pretty good we did, we did a couple takes and uh nothing happened bad nobody nobody caught fire no, no nothing it was just a uh, it was scary though. It was a scary moment. It, it was um, it was hot, dude. It was like, it was, it was, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it, was, it was hot, dude. But but I, you know, when I look back, man, dude, the the atmosphere there was it was dangerous. It was uh, it, it was dangerous, man. But it was dangerous. But it was it was cool. It was safe but dangerous. Um, you know, with the fire. Oh, and uh, of course, I got back. You know, now I realize that I think I got a concussion um on set because i had to bust through one of these classrooms i was the first one with a chair and they had slime and dirt all over the place so whenever i went there i went through the through the room with the chair and the creature was was in there and sticking his paws out like this and i and i was supposed to go in there and whack him with the chair but there was slime on the floor so when i whacked him with the chair the chair popped me like that i hit the ground nobody's stopping right so I'm getting I'm getting stampeded on. <laughs> they don't think that I'm really they, they think it was an act. I'm sitting there hurt on the floor. <laughs> and people are people are like trying to fight this people. I'm, I'm on the ground like this, like, no, I'm hurt, y'all. I'm hurt. <laughs> but uh, that was that was that was a real dangerous situation. But after that, Obi came to me. Obi was like art, great ass job. <laughs> I was like. Uh, okay uh whatever okay all right that's cool no, cool homie but uh that was that was the only dangerous situation that i came across was whenever i got whacked by my own chair and um but uh and then, oh yeah and then we had to run into those little the hallways were like this small so we all had torches so of course again i had a jerry curl you know one little spark i'm like michael jackson right pepsi commercial i'm going up and um so we all had to run through the hallways with these with these torches so you know i'm running I'm looking there. I'm like, <laughs> I'm making sure I don't, 
<laughs> the torch is staying from away from me. You hear people behind me, you can hear the, you can hear the torch going back. I'm like, yo, yo. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, everything was cool. Nobody, nobody got hurt. It was, yeah, nobody got <laughs> hurt. On the but it, it was cool. It was a little dangerous, but it was cool. It was, yeah. A lot of dirt, but it was experience. It was, it was fun. <laughs> fun thing. I'm like, no complaints. No complaints. <laughs> So um, do you have a favorite, I guess, overall memory of working on the drifting classroom or is it just a lot of uh, <laughs> great experience overall? Because you filmed for like four months, was it? Yeah, yeah, it was like four months. Um, yeah, and I was one and I was one of the ones that survived the end. So I was like, I was there to the last day. Yeah, um, yeah man, it's, um, I think, <laughs> you know what, I was going to say, no, nah, you know, what? I think the very, the, the very ending, whenever we all was clean. Like, you know, at the end when we had the white uniforms on. Yeah. The, you know, at the end, we had these white, we had these white uniforms on that we made uh from the gym room. And um that was the cleanest day ever. Like we were all dressed up. Uh I had my curl laid back, you know, I got to look all good and everything, had my little outfit on and and uh everything was clean that day. The set was clean, everything was clean. So we really got to enjoy being clean for an entire day. <laughs> that was that was that was fun because because I was wearing that same freaking pink shirt Converse and and jeans every day for four months. I didn't have no kind of new outfits, and um and that day was we got that we got to wear something different. We was like, oh, this is this is cool. We are in another set of a different set of clothing. But um and then the piggy bank the piggy bank was one that was one of the best scenes ever. That was one of the best days. Uh, that was one of the best days I had on set because of the fact that uh. That was the funniest day because we could not stop laughing all freaking day. So, yeah. um, and that that was that was fun. But yeah, it was it was a lot of memories, dude. It was it was it was uh just oh yeah, remember that little creature? That little creature that um little green one? Yeah, that little dude. That was funny because that thing was like I still remember that thing was like one point three million dollars, one point three million yen. Whoa! And uh, and I remember when when they were trying to get that thing to work. You know they had it on the they had it on the strings and stuff. They had legs. They had legs dangling. And I was like, "What the hell is that?" You know, it's like, <laughs> "What is this little thing?" This the legs are just dangling, and it, you see somebody with the with the puppet strings just running around with this little thing running out, yeah. <laughs> running around <laughs> step. And uh, and then a little kid just riding around the bicycle playing with it. And I remember we were waiting for that scene because they kept trying to get it right. They couldn't get it right, so we kept seeing. Man, get rid of this little thing because it don't work right. It, it, it wouldn't work. It took them a while to get that little thing working. But um, so that was fun too. That that was fun uh, seeing something like that and how much it costs and we, we, we was petting it, taking a lot of pictures with it and stuff like that. And uh, oh, I was dude. It was so many, so many memories, man. It was just um, it was crazy. But you know, one thing I hated, man, was was uh, one thing I learned was about movie sets is patience because. Yeah. Some days, dude, we're in the other hangar. Us kids, we're just in the other hangar waiting for like four hours. Just another hangar. We're, we're playing like, we're playing baseball. We're, you know, we're just doing things to try to keep for the time to go. And I was like, man, is this how movies are? You got to wait like four hours for to get on set? And dude, that was, oh man, that was, that was one of the worst experiences was, was the wait, the wait times to get, to get up, to get our, uh, to get our scenes going. But, um, because we'll go there and we'll go there sometimes. We'll go to work and you got to wait. We don't get on set to like three hours later because Troy and all them are doing their scene. But <clears throat> yeah, that was a uh, that, that was that was crazy, man. Mm. The earthquake scene when the, yep. when the lady, <laughs> dude, that was scary. Because <laughs> <laughs> dude, the, the the classroom was literally shaking like it was it was doing this, yeah. and uh and sand is going everywhere, and she's on a string, so you got the string flying all over the place, flying her all over the place, and we're all like hopping on each other. We're Dude, that was freaking dangerous, scary, and fun at the same time. <laughs> yeah, that was <laughs> good. But that, yeah, that, that was an experience. So that that was that's dude, there's so many experiences though. That, yeah, yeah. They yeah, the whole class, the whole class was on like a like a some kind of tilting thing. And uh yeah, that was that was Yeah, they, oh yeah, they use they use the camera too. They use the camera to shake, but they, the classroom was shaking too. They 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 had everything. <laughs> yeah, you can tell like watching that scene, like it's really like you know. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah, that was <laughs> that was yeah, that was really that was really moving. That was that was crazy, man. That was like I say, it was. I'm just glad nobody got hurt, dude. 
Nobody yeah. got hurt doing that stuff, man. Cause she actually, she was on that rope. She was actually flying to them. They made sure she flew because if you go too far, she'll run. <laughs> she, Cause the window was right yeah. here. She can, like she can like boom hit the wall, <laughs> but they made sure she flew right into the right. Into the... <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because I was wondering how that worked logistically when I was watching it yesterday. So, it was... <laughs> <laughs> but look at it, I was like, I was like, man, they could have did it, dude. They could have did such a better job because I mean, yeah, granted, it was in the '80s, you know, uh, you know, it was in the '80s, but they could have did a, they could have did a. The green screen was, you know, like I said, the green screen was the background was they could have, they could look, they could. They could have did a little better job of hiding the streams. I think they, they you can still see, you can still see the streams. So uh, when she was floating, but and then she was like a board. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who floats like that? <laughs> I don't know. It looked like an exorcism more so than like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. She was, <laughs> was floating like that, but um, yeah, that was uh, yeah, that 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 was an experience. Dude. That was <laughs> oh, and the singing. Dude, I, I ain't never done a day of singing before in my life, man. It's like, okay, all right, all right. here it comes the vibe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what the hell am I doing? <laughs> yeah. I remember there was a scene later on in the movie where there was like several different songs like overlapping at each other. <laughs> yeah. Well, so what was that like too? So. <laughs> Dude, all I, I know was that that I think that 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 whole scene took all fucking day. Like that scene took like I think a couple days. We got tired of that, man, because, uh, um, you know, because <laughs> that's, that's what, when I did my little look, huh? <laughs> I think I was the one, I think I was the one that popped the bubble gum. No, that was the other girl, that lady that popped the bubble gum. But, uh, <clears throat> oh yeah, that was my, my, my girlfriend, Quantai. She was my girlfriend in the movie. But, um, yeah, that was, that was, uh, dude, that was, that was an experience, man. I didn't like it. Cause I, like I said, I didn't, I didn't like singing dance. I didn't want to do singing dance. And, uh, it was corny. It, it, it was corny. I was like, oh. Why are we doing this? Why are we singing? This is supposed to be a sci-fi. What, <laughs> what the hell are we making here? <laughs> you know, dude, Japan is so twisted. Their movies. That's why I love I love Japanese flicks because they're so yeah. twisted. They might be Me think too. twice. And and, and, and you know, uh, not to get off subject, but like the whenever the chick was uh, taking a shower. Yeah. When she was taking what well, it was like a yeah. naked shower. <laughs> dude, she's like twelve years old in, in the movie. In real life, she's yeah. like she's like eleven or twelve. <laughs> Dude, there'd be all kind of sanctions and all that shit. <laughs> you got yeah. a little eleven year old naked. You got a little eleven year old taking a naked sandy shower. Yeah, that was eighties. That was weird, dude. That was like I was like, no, nah, that's not. A, it was just not that you don't see no in United in USCA movies. You do not see no eleven year old taking a naked shower. Yeah, that's very true. And then like the entire rest of the movie, I think she got it worse than everyone else because she was just caked in sand for the rest of the movie. So. <laughs> <laughs> powdered her yeah she was, yeah. <laughs> yeah she was uh yeah she was man she was she was a uh, i think she was one of them um talented little girls she was like i think she did what piano and she did violin she did something back then she was i remember i need to look her up she she was a talented little lady back then i don't know, yeah. she, maybe she, uh, I don't know how old she is right now but yeah she was talented i remember she was yeah everybody was cool that's a good thing everybody was cool on set so but dude that was like a melting pot you know we had everybody from russian to middle eastern to african to it, dude it was that was a melting pot of kids it's like i ain't never seen kids from all over the world that was weird man I was, weirdly in a good way you know it's like yeah they really brought a lot of kids together like they really took the time to pick kids from different parts of the world and brought us together um yeah, that was, that was crazy. Yeah, well, that's like a theme in a lot of Obayashi's movies that I've seen is that it's all about world peace and bringing people together. So maybe that's what he was trying to go for with Drifting mm. Classroom and mm -hmm. especially as like anti-war movies and stuff. And have you seen his other movies, by the way? You know what? Uh, what the, the one from 1977? I haven't, seen, I haven't seen the movies from the beginning to the end, but I read up on them. And I guess the other famous one that he had before Drifting Classroom was the one in 1977. Uh, house, I think, or House. Yeah. Yes, yes, House is one of his known ones. And, uh, but I haven't, I, haven't, I haven't seen the movie, but I've read up on it. And um, yeah, I know he done, I know he done a lot of stuff. Um, and yeah. actually, actually, me and my lady, we went to Okinawa three years ago. I tried to 
uh, get a hold of some people out there, sort of, you know, uh, Obiashi, obviously he's a hard guy to get a hold of. You can't just like call him. Yeah. You know? <laughs> It would have been nice. Though. It would have been nice to, if I would have tried harder. I probably would have got a hold of him, but um, I didn't get to see him. But we, I did try to meet up with some people out there when I went to back when I went back to Japan. But nothing panned out, though. Yeah. Hold on, but you know what? Before um, you get to the next question, um, you 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 told me what was one of the most memorable. Yeah, you know what? The little guy. I'm never gonna forget that little guy. The little guy who ran into the room and said, Miss Midori, Miss Midori's getting married. <laughs> that dude was a jerk. That little dude, he was one of those guys from Russia. I don't forgot where he was from, but he thought he was like high mighty, like he was the top actor. He was one of those spoiled guys where his parents was rich and he got everything he wanted in life. And uh, he thought he was just the best actor at 10 years old. Like he was, dude, and I'm 15, 16. One day, man, I taught the guy a lesson, dude, because he kept just, what do you call it? He kept, uh, uh, what do you call that? Whatever, he, he, he was talking down to us all the time. A condescending? Um, or... Yeah, talking to us in a condescending way every day. And one day I just let it go. You know, I said, you know what? I'm 15 years old and you're 10, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to teach you a little lesson. I'm going to teach you a lesson though, dude. And then one day we got into it. I got what we, we got into. It. I knew I wasn't going to really punch him, but I knew that people would get in, in the way, but I wanted to scare him. So one day we just got into it. I think we were doing something. I think I pushed him, we shoved him, and they wound up separating us for a while. But yeah, I, I had to teach that little kid lesson. And everybody was like high-fiving me because they were waiting to slap this little kid in the face. They were waiting to slap him because he was just, every day he was just like that bougie, condescending, talking little dude. And uh, I got to look him up too. I got to see what that little kid is up to. Because, but uh, yeah, that, yeah, he was, he, was, uh, he was a thorn in my ass every every freaking day but i think at the at the end we all we all laughed about it at the end at the end we all laughed and cried you know everybody cried at the end and, yeah i'm gonna miss you i'm gonna miss you it also worked with that character in the movie because he was the one who like ran to the classroom he's like hey she's getting married and so oh. <laughs> seems like they got the right kid to play that part <laughs> yeah, you know what? I think, um, you know what and to come to think of it i'm not gonna lie he was actually good but i think i was pissed because I had no experience and he was a good little kid. He, he was good at acting. I'm not gonna lie. He knew what he was talking about. I didn't know shit. <laughs> that was my first time being in the movie. He was already in a couple of things. So uh, he knew what he was talking about, but he didn't talk to us like that. You know, dude, yeah. I'm, I'm 15 years old. You're only 10. You don't talk to me like that. <laughs> I don't care how good you are in acting. You're not gonna talk to me like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good stance but, uh, to take. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, dude, now you, you, you bring it back. Now I gotta, I gotta, I gotta try to get a hold of these kids. Yeah. Uh, maybe there'll be a drifting classroom reunion who knows <laughs> that, you know what that is uh, uh you know what i get you know i don't know uh, wow uh, you know what? i gotta i gotta start reaching out to some more people something like that but anyways yeah <laughs> all right well i think that's all the questions i really have do you have any like closing statements that you want to make about things we didn't get to or anything um uh no uh like i say uh no regrets everything's good um if you out there like comedy uh the black ones podcast I'm on all platforms spotify iheart google podcast stitcher itunes doesn't matter the black ones it's that 90s comedy if you like dave Chappelle, if you like uh, eddie murphy the old school raw and delirious if you like rich Pryor, all that type of comedy if you get offended it's not for you my comedy is not for you if you like, if you know Mel Brooks, who Mel Brooks is, I'm like a black Mel Brooks, put it that way. <laughs> so uh, that's how my comedy is. So check it out, the Black Ones Podcast on all platforms. And uh, just be on the lookout. Black Ones coming at you. We're good. Yeah. I'll leave and, links to that in my video and, description. And I appreciate you, Ian. Because <laughs> like I say, this, this, this has been a while since I even talked about this. And it's, it's, it's a relief to get this out. <laughs> Yeah, I'm really glad, and thank you so much for uh, giving me the opportunity to talk about this with you. Yeah, this, this was a lot of fun. Yeah, man. Yeah, you bring. Yeah, this, this is crazy, dude. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> but uh, hey, anyways, man. Hey, hey. I guess. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it a lot. So have a good one, man. Uh, Kenny, I'm out. <laughs> have a good one, Eva. God bless you, dude. Yeah. Bye bye. Ha, <laughs>